the first moment where you know it started down the path that it's on now would probably be when I uh, found the unicycle. The first, you know, I did not know how to ride unicycle. I hadn't ever really thought about riding unicycle, but um, you know, when, when uh, you happen to find a unicycle um, in a dumpster that uh, nobody was using, somebody didn't want anymore. Um, so I, I picked that up and taught myself to ride. I got to the uh, point where I was comfortable enough riding the unicycle, where I felt that if I tried to play the bagpipes while riding the unicycle, I, I probably was not gonna damage my bagpipes, um, cause uh, being a, a poor recent college grad, uh, you know, I, I couldn't afford a, a new set of bagpipes if I had uh, done something to them. So uh, anyways, uh, um, there, uh, I had to be in the right mindset. You know, I was with some friends and we had some beers and uh, you know, that topic of conversation comes up again. It's like, hey, you've got a unicycle and uh, you play bagpipes. And uh, it just sounded like a good idea, right, at that, at that moment. So that, that first moment um, I, I uh, tried, um, immediately I had uh, regretted uh, not trying any sooner because it just worked so well. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't like, oh, it took me three times, you know, and I fell over twice. No, it was just like instant, like click, like wow. ready to, to move on to the next thing in my life and I decided to, to move to Portland. I still had this passion of playing the bagpipes and riding the unicycle and I carried that with me and started uh, performing here in, in Portland around town and uh, once again uh, the reaction was overwhelmingly positive you know if not even more so. People would start to, to recognize me and you know I would hear stories and friends tell me, oh, I heard, overheard some people talking about this guy who was riding a unicycle and playing bagpipes. Around that time, the producers of uh, America's Got Talent had uh, reached out to me. When I had this opportunity um, in front of me to, you know, try out for a national uh, television show, you know, I felt like I needed to give it my all and, you know, maybe uh, take it up a notch. And uh, that's when I uh, first had the idea of incorporating uh, the Darth Vader costume. when the producers of Jimmy Kimmel Live uh, contacted me uh, and asked me to come down to uh, Los Angeles and perform uh, live on uh, television. Um, and uh, uh, so th that, that was a great experience and it was um, shortly after that uh, when I returned to Portland, um, I believe in the Willamette Week, they had uh, written a little piece about me being on the show and they had called me uh, Portland's unofficial mascot. Um, so th that was something that, you know, really stuck in my head, you know, when I started realizing that people are, you know, latching on to what I'm doing and kind of like uh, there was a sense of pride developing around uh, this unique thing that is happening in, in Portland. Somebody saw me performing uh, in Darth Vader costume uh, and, and they were like, oh, wow, you know, I, I see you can ride the unicycle and play the bagpipes, but where's the fire? And, you know, uh, this offhanded uh, comment that, that was intended to be a joke, um, you know, it put the idea in my head. The way that the creative process works for me, I, I can't sit down and uh, just try and force it. Um, these are things that come to me uh, while I'm out experiencing something else, you know? You can't just isolate yourself and expect to, to be creative. You have to be out there, um, you have to be an active participant uh, in your community and be exposed to new things. Um, because, you know, I, I firmly believe that there there is no such thing as a new idea. You're just taking existing ideas and combining them in new ways. When, when I'm uh, at home and I have an idea and I'm trying to develop it, um, I, I want to go somewhere where I can uh, just kind of focus and take my mind off of everything else. Um, so I, I like it to be uh, somewhere that's comfortable for me. So I've created a space where I've surrounded myself uh, with things that uh, are, are meaningful to me. Um, I'm by nature uh, a, a collector. 
mainly things of a uh, science fiction and uh, geeky nature. Um, so so I, I've got a, a, the walls of my room are lined with um, all of these mementos that I've picked up over the years and displayed in, in a way that's you know meaningful uh, to me. Just being in that space is you know it's it's comfortable for me and it allows me to focus on my work. I, I would encourage people, um, current Portland creatives to uh, continue following your passion and, and uh, you know, just operate as, as you have and do what interests you. Um, because part of what makes Portland so great is, is the passion that uh, creatives have for what they do. You know, you can tell when someone enjoys what they do and that that shows in their work. So, you know, you need to keep yourself uh, engaged uh, and, and not lose sight of uh, why you're doing uh, what you started in the first place. Moving forward, um, I, I think one of the challenges that uh, I, I could face as a Portland creative uh, being the Unipiper is um, staying relevant uh, on a stage that is uh, becoming more and more crowded um, with, with other uh, creatives uh, vying for attention, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, um, competition is always great. And I don't, I don't think competition is quite the right word. Um, but I just want to make sure that uh, what is available in Portland uh, represents um, what we uh, as, as a society uh, want to be seen for and known for in, in Portland. <laughs>